What is going on everyone? It's Brody back again with another tennis topic and today's tennis topic is going to be talking about tension for your tennis racket. Now tension is probably one of the most overlooked things. Not a lot of people know exactly what they what the tension range on their racket actually means or what tension actually does. So that's what I'm going to explain here today. I'm going to explain what the range on your racket means, what happens when you go higher, when you go lower, as well as what you should typically be looking to string these main types of strings at in your specific racket. So first thing first is, like I said, your racket has a tension range on it. So no matter where it is, it's sometimes on the side of the racket, it's sometimes in the throat of the racket, it is on there. So you have to find it in order for, in order for you to know what you can use for your racket. So biggest thing is that usually the most common tension range is arguably like 50 to 60 or 50 to 59. And I'm using pounds because I'm here in America. Yes, I know kilograms is also a thing. I don't know the exact conversion off the top of my head for that, but I'm just going to use it in pounds. So make with it what you will. The same lessons will still apply no matter what you, no matter which unit you're using. So with the range on your racket, so let's just say on your racket, your range says 50 to 60 pounds. So you have a range right there of about a 10 pounds to where the racket is recommended to be strung at and it is comfortable to where the racket is not going to break if you go tight or it's not going to get too loose and play awfully if you go extremely, extremely low. So typically you do wanna stay around in the tension range depending on the type of string you are using, which we'll get into down here. But if you're using a higher tension, so instead of, so if you're using from like 56 and above in this, in this tension range specifically, you are going to get more control out of your string. Now, the reason for this is because that the higher tensions, the strings are tighter in the racket. Since the strings are tighter in the racket, they don't move as much. Since the string does not move as much, it does not allow the string to snap back into place as fast and create more of the power and more of the spin that you would usually get from going to in with a different tension. So you really wanna be careful because if you get a tighter string or you get it strung tighter, the string is going to feel a little bit stiffer because it's not moving around as much, it's not, and it's just not flexing as much. So you have to be careful. If you have arm issues or you've had shoulder surgery before, you should probably stay away from higher tension unless you have a specific type of string, like I said, we'll talk about here later. So if we go higher, we tend to get more control. If we go lower, so usually at about 54 to 50, and again, we're just using the tension range that's in there. We'll usually get more power. And you can sometimes also say you can get more, using the wrong letter, you can get more spin. So as I said with, as I said with the higher rackets, the lower, which is just the opposite, the strings are more loose inside the racket. They can move around a lot easier. And that's what's going to allow the strings to snap back into place when they when the ball hits them to create more spin, more power, and to be easier on your arm because the strings are not as stiff inside the racket. If you are someone who really wants a string that's gonna be easier on the arm or a string setup that's not gonna cause like tennis elbow or anything, you can typically look to a lower string pattern excuse me, a lower string tension, not string pattern, and this will help with it. Now, if you go one way or the other, you do sacrifice the other one. So what I mean by that in terms of actual speak instead of just whatever that was, if you go higher, you get more control, but you run the risk of losing power and spin. If you go lower in tension, you get more power and spin, but you don't have as much control that's where the type of string comes in. So what we'll talk about, first off is gonna be polyester, probably one of the most common, if not arguably the most common string that is out now. A lot of people are using this string, but this string is very, very stiff. So if you have a string that's very stiff, it does tend to be a little bit harder on your arm and it can sometimes cause tennis elbow or tennis issues. With polyester, 
These are also designed to be stiff, so they have good control. You're already in, you're already what you would get if you go to a higher tension, but they also are designed to have good spin. So with polyesters, you can usually get away with, because the string is already designed for control and spin, you can usually get away with going more on the lower side for these because the string is already going to be giving you a lot more help with control, spin, and everything else. If you go with a polyester at a higher tension, especially if you've never done it before, you have arm issues, the string is going to be too stiff because the string isn't moving as much and it's too tight in the racket, as well as it's too stiff from how it is made, you're just asking to just kill your arm no matter what you do. So if you want to avoid arm injury, you want a string polyester typically at a lower tension than what you would any of these strings that are gonna be coming up. Now with polyester, you'll see many different things along the internet that say you can go extremely low with poly and that is true to a certain point. I'm not gonna say that it's the worst thing in the world if you go below the tension range. So like in our 50 to 60 pound example, with polyesters, you can usually get away with going below that because of how much control and spin the racket, the string is already generating for you. If you go above the tension range, no matter what string it is, you are running the risk of cracking your racket. If you crack your racket because you go outside the tension range and the companies can see that because usually most tennis rackets come with a one year warranty on manufacturing defects, if they see that you have strung outside of your tension range on the racket, the warranty is null and void. So don't, I highly recommend never going above the highest number on your tension range, even if that's what you're used to in a different racket, just switch it over to the highest you can go in the new racket you're using. It'll play a little bit more similar because that's what that racket is meant to deal with. If you go lower, you're typically fine because the string isn't as tight and you can usually get away with it. But I typically wouldn't say going lower on what some of these softer strings is going to be a good idea because then, then they're gonna be too loose inside the string. You're gonna have too much power and it's just not gonna have a good feel to it because you'll be sailing the ball rather than actually having a little bit of control to where you can place the ball and actually choose where you want your shot to go. But that's on polyester. Typically you can go lower and that's, that's typically a better place to start just so that we can avoid arm issues or anything like that. Then next up we have multi-filaments. Multi-filament strings, these are softer strings. They're easy on the arm. They're already a lot more powerful. So you already have them here in the power section. They don't have as much control or spin, that's polyester. So with multi-filaments, you're pretty good to go more so on the higher side, just because with multi-filaments being a softer string, you can go higher, get the control back, and, sin and since the string is already made with a bunch of different multi mul it, with multiple different fibers, hence the name multi-filament, then you can just tighten that string up to give you the control that you would otherwise normally have from a polyester and a softer string that's not gonna hurt your arm. Again, don't ever go above the tension range on any string because you can void the warranty and it tends to be extremely stiff to where it can sometimes cause arm issues. But multi-filaments, you can get away with going higher and you should be you should be just fine as long as you don't have any issues previously that you that you don't know about or anything like that. Now, next on, we'll move to synthetic gut. Synthetic gut is probably the most cheap string that you'll find. It is just kind of there to get put into a racket. It plays plays decently. Sometimes can feel a little bit stiff if you're not used to it, but it's just kind of there to let you know what the racket feels, what it does, and just go from there if you want a really cheap string that's not gonna do you any harm. So if you are using a synthetic gut, I'd say for the most part, you could probably go more in like the mid tension. So like 55 being, being the mid, because if you go at 55 in this example or the, right in the middle of your tension range, you're gonna have a good balance of control and power out of the string. So usually if you're just starting out or if you're just using a synthetic gut string, going at mid tension is gonna help you just because it's gonna be a balance. You'll see how the racket plays and then you can adjust from there. So starting off mid tension, usually is the best place to start for synthetic gut. 
And then you can just adjust from here or there, depending on what you personally want, or you even change strain to polyester, multi-filament, or one of these next two we'll talk about. So after synthetic gut, we go to natural gut, the ultimate king of tennis strings, probably been around the longest and the most, and one of the most known, also the most expensive. Natural gut, very easy on the arm, a lot of power, hold, tends to hold tension very well, very hard to maintain. This one is very susceptible to weather. So if you are not someone who is actually just gonna keep and maintain, make sure that this string is up kept well, you probably don't wanna go with natural gut, go with the multi-filament instead. It'll just be a little bit easier and you don't have to spend as much money. But natural gut, because of how much natural gut costs and with how powerful it is, I'm not saying because of cost you can do this, but natural gut is a very powerful string and it's probably one of the most arm friendly, but you can go more so at the higher tensions on this and still be fine. A higher tension natural gut, that's gonna help make sure that you have just a very easy time controlling the rack, controlling the string from the racket because the strings are already extremely powerful and it's gonna be softer on your arm compared to multi-filament, synthetic gut and polyester in its entirety. If you go higher, you probably won't have too hard of a time controlling it because it's just going to work well with that type of string rather than just going lower to where you have way too much power and you're spraying the ball everywhere. We don't want that. We want to be actually we want to actually be able to place our shots and that's why we go a little bit higher in the tension for natural gut. Then finally down here we have hybrids. So hybrids as you, the name implies, it's a combination of, of two types of string. Usually it's a polyester string, polyester right there, and a multi-filament. So you can use these two to go here. And typically what you wanna do with hybrids is, I'll use the blue here as the example. You wanna make the poly lower. This is getting harder and harder to write on down here. And the multi oops i made an i instead of the t i was getting ahead of myself and you want the multi at a higher tension all right with my little small drawings and small small letters at the bottom hybrids are a little bit of a just kind of as it says combination of these two Usually if you're having a hybrid, you would want the polyester to be a little bit lower in tension just so that it loosens up, it's not as hard on your arm. And then you wanna have the multi-filament go in at a little bit of a higher tension so that way it is a little bit more control oriented so you're not spraying the ball by having two lower tensions in the actual hybrid setup itself. Typ typically a nice spread that I like to do is if I'll have the polyester say at 53, then the multi-filament will go to 55 if the tension range is 50 to is 50 to 60, or you can go 52 and 54, just depending on your personal preference. Usually you want to stay, you, you would want to stay around there just because it is going to balance out the strings. But if you want to do them at the same tension, that's fine too. You just know that it is going to play differently because you have two different sets of string in there. And just to be careful, definitely try it if you're interested, but Usually if you go with the two different tensions, it is gonna be a, it is gonna work a little bit better because then you're allowing the different attributes of the two strings to work in con conjunction with each other rather than having them fight each other trying to do the exact same thing. So there is one final string type I'm not gonna talk I didn't mention on here because I don't think nearly anyone should ever be using that using it, and that is Kevlar. Kevlar, yes. If you've heard that word before and you're like, why have I heard that word before? It is the material used in bulletproof vests. So Kevlar is an actual string type. I typically don't like people using Kevlar because it's very harsh, very hard on the arm. It doesn't do well. And I'll tell you a story I, that I heard. There was a coach that was coaching a kid and they decided that the kid wanted, it was time for the kid to learn how to use spin. And they decided to put Kevlar in the kid's racket so that the string wouldn't break. Kevlar is a great string for not breaking because it's so hard, but it's extremely harsh on the player and anyone who uses it. So coach did that, put the put Kevlar in the kid's racket. And mind you, the kid is like 10 and he's learning how to put topspin on the ball. After they do that, they put the Kevlar in the kid's racket. Two, I'll say two months later, kid is kid goes back to where the guy's strong and is like, 
mom, my arm is like, I can't feel it. It hurts. It's nothing but pain. Every time he plays tennis, it's just, he's in pain. There's no remedy for it unless he stops playing for, for a while. And it's because the coach told him to put Kevlar in. So I really don't like Kevlar in anyone's racket, even if you do break string often. I'd rather you save your arm rather rather than having a string that's not going to break. It's in my opinion, it's worth more to pay to get the string to pay to get the racket restrung more times than it is to put Kevlar in there and potentially hurt your arm for the rest of your life. That's my opinion. If you've used Kevlar before and you haven't found that that's the that that's the case, please let me know. I'd be very interested to hear what you say. But that is what that is my stance on Kevlar. And that is where I'm going to stick with it. So with that being said, this is an easy way to understand uh, your ideal tension or where you should be. Make sure you know what range is on your racket and then follow these steps here as to what you should be looking at depending on the type of string you're using. So with that being said, if you like the video, leave a like on it. Comment down below any more questions that you may have about tension or what type of string you may want to use in your racket. I'll get back to them as soon as I can so that we can just all know what we're talking about with our gear and we can avoid injury as much as possible. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe to the channel so that we can get so that we can grow the channel, get the information out there from the people who have it to the people who need it. There's a lot of tennis misinformation in the tennis community, especially around tension, and we just need to grow the channel so we can get the information out there from the people that have it to the people that need it. And as always, take care.